Hey everyone! There was a recent post on Reddit in the PHP subreddit about Laravel considered harmful. And this video today is about how considered harmful posts are considered harmful. First and foremost, let's dig into what a considered harmful post is. It usually has a title in the format of X considered harmful. That X could be a programming language, uh, it could be a design pattern, it could be something as simple as else statements. No matter what, it's something that someone has an axe to grind against. And if we go and search Google, there are a lot of results. Like, a lot. So, let's dig into it. Let's try and examine maybe the history of these things. Now that we know what a considered harmful post is, when were they created? When was the first one done? It actually turns out it was 50 years ago. The first considered harmful post was by Edsger Dijkstra. And it wasn't even originally titled Go To Statements Considered Harmful, even though that was the eventual title. It was actually titled <clears throat> A Case Against the Go To Statement. Right? Far less inflammatory, but someone else slapped on a better title and the history is written. And it's actually not a bad post. It talks about how harmful go-to statements really can be. Doesn't mean you never want to use them, but you should probably think about using them. And it's a, it's a very good essay. But over the years, there have been just so many posts that take it further and further into an opinionated description of things rather than an objective description of things. And typically, the better thing we can do is just compare and contrast objectively rather than getting very subjective. And the considered harmful posts are typically very subjective. What I'm saying here isn't even new, right? I am actually just repeating what was said in a blog post 20 years ago, right? Considered harmful posts have been harmful for at least 20 years and probably even longer than that. It, the post I'm talking about was made by Eric Meyer, who you might actually recognize their name from a CSS reset that has been helpful for websites throughout the years, right? There are newer CSS resets that have to do a little bit less because browsers have caught up. But yeah, his CSS reset kind of changed the way the internet was developed, or how cross-browser development actually worked. And it's very nice. Uh, but, yeah, he wrote this post 20 years ago. And he goes into some of the same stuff I've dug into, right? The, the what are they, the why they happen, and, you know, what's a better option than some of that? And we're going to talk about and, and discuss it. While digging into the why of how some of these posts get made and the motivations behind them, he has one very important caveat that I consider a bit of like a tongue-in-cheek joke, and that one's a bit fun. <clears throat> Quoting, There are those cases where such essays are written because the author enjoys grandstanding and knows that the use of the considered harmful format will get them noticed. A piece of this type is usually so over the top that it is easy to spot. For example, a piece titled Considered Harmful Essays Considered Harmful would very likely be a case of using the considered harmful format to draw attention for its own sake. We will ignore such essays in this commentary. Pretty good, right? Very tongue-in-cheek, very, uh, you know, self-reflective. And yeah, right? He's using the format for effect rather than actually, like, using it how many people use it. So there's typically two types of motivation for writing a blog post like this, right? For writing a considered harmful essay. And the motivation typically comes from two types. There's one where someone has an axe to grind and they want to just totally just point out all these things and it's just going to dunk on the opposing side. And yeah, it's this little known thing that they just want other people to like be concerned about and they want to raise awareness, etc. And sometimes they want people to raise pitchforks. The other motivation is typically some long-running post, right? Something like, uh, you know, object-oriented programming versus functional programming, things like that, where there's never going to be a right or wrong. It's always just evaluate the problem you're trying to solve type situations. The answer is always it depends, right? But there are going to be people who will have considered harmful posts about it. And Eric Meyer even goes on to say that there's a variation of Godwin's Law that we can have where the longer a discussion of that type goes on, the more likely a considered harmful post is to happen, right? It's almost an eventuality the longer it goes on, right? The, it becomes basically a 100% certainty or 99.99999% likely to happen that, yeah, a considered harmful post is going to happen. So I think that's an interesting take too. 
So the motivations behind these are typically people are passionate about something and they're wanting to share that passion, have other be people be passionate too. And it just doesn't always work that way. So if considered harmful essays are considered bad, what is the better approach, right? It's the thing that we were actually taught how to do in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. A proper compare and contrast objective essay. And I think we've lost that these days because objectivity doesn't get views, right? On Twitter, on other platforms, something incendiary that ruffles people's feathers will get more views. It's just how people work in general. The news has known this for years, right? Eventually, I think people are going to get tired of having their feathers ruffled, and objective compare and contrast essays will come back into the forefront. But until then, now we're probably going to have to deal with incendiary essays like this. So my favorite part of this essay is actually the conclusion, because it sums up everything that was said perfectly, and it's, I think, a good thing to go out on with this video, right? And it's worth recognizing and understanding just basically says everything that I wanted to say. I mainly wanted to share this entire essay with you. Considered harmful essays are not only a sad cliche at this stage of the game. They are counterproductive to reasoned debate and most often do far more harm than good to whatever cause they promote. It would therefore seem obvious that the only intelligent course of action is to abandon their use entirely and instead look to more constructive forms of essay writing in the support of debate positions something I can totally get behind and I don't I don't know is there people that really think that shouldn't be the way I don't know.